Hi, I'm Melissa Cobb. Come fly with AOPA. This week is the big reveal, the new paint and interior on the AOPA sweepstakes Cessna 170. We take you behind the scenes of the Reno Air Race team breathless and a cool surprise at the High Sierra fly -in. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. The NTSB has released its preliminary report on the October 1st accident that fatally injured AOPA Air Safety Institute Senior Vice President Richard McSpadden and former NFL player and longtime pilot Russ Francis. Russ and Richard were flying a Cessna Cardinal. They had taken off from the Lake Placid Airport in the Adirondack Mountains of New York. They were going to be forming up with a Beechcraft Bonanza for a photo shoot for AOPA My Pilot Magazine. The Cardinal was going to be the subject of that. The aircraft turned back toward the runway and crashed not too long after takeoff. Uh, one witness had told the NTSB that it sounded like the engine wasn't developing full power during the climb out. Now, in its preliminary report, the NTSB details the short flight as well as really thoroughly documenting its investigation into the aircraft systems and configuration of the aircraft after impact. The NTSB didn't note anything significant regarding the fuel systems, ignition system, or oil. We're going to drop a link to that full preliminary report for you in the description below so you can get all the details. Also, the AOPA Air Safety Institute is working on an early analysis of this that should be coming out in the coming weeks. The early analysis is a series that Richard had pioneered. Well, the FAA finally has a new permanent leader. The Senate unanimously confirmed Michael Whitaker as the new FAA administrator. This will be the first permanent leader the agency has had since Steve Dixon stepped down in March of 2022. AOPA President Mark Baker called Michael a capable leader. He is very well versed and knowledgeable in the aviation industry and the FAA. Michael is a private pilot and he has experience at the FAA. He was the deputy administrator and also the chief next gen officer from 2013 to 2016. He also has experience in the airline industry as well as urban air mobility. AOPA is fighting for an airport that has had a significant impact in general aviation's history, and that is Piper Memorial Airport in Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. The city is considering closing the airport because it costs the city money. AOPA is urging the city to pursue options to maximize the airport's economic potential. It already generates $13 million in annual economic impact. Now, AOPA also reminded the city of its federal grant obligations to keep the airport open and operating. Now the airport hosts a really popular fly-in. Those of us on the East Coast know about it. It's called Sentimental Journey. Well, it's finally here. The big reveal for the AOPA sweepstakes Cessna 170B's new paint and interior. AOPA social media marketer Kayla McLeod Hunt shows us the new look and takes it up for a flight. Hey! Kayla here, and I'm so excited to reintroduce the 2023 AOPA sweepstakes aircraft, this 1953 Cessna 170B. Over the past year and a half, we've taken a stock Cessna 170 and transformed it into a fire-breathing backcountry beast, complete with Continental Prime's IO370 195 horsepower engine, Hartzell Trailblazer propeller, and 26-inch Alaskan bushwheel tires. Gardner Law Aviation Services in Atlanta completely transformed the stock panel into a modern day marvel featuring instruments from Garmin, Aspen, and PS Engineering. The interior is also super lightweight, perfect for the backcountry. We even have folding jump seats from Lakeview Aeronautics and custom backcountry embroidery. Hawk Aircraft Services in Zephyr Hills, Florida took Michael Garber's custom backcountry paint scheme and turned this airplane into a flying canvas featuring a turquoise mountainscape complemented by AOPA's vintage wings. 
Not only does the 170 look perfect for any backcountry adventure, but it's truly equipped for it as well. We have steam stall wing cuffs on the aircraft, as well as micro aerodynamics vortex generators. This is truly one of the most fun airplanes I have ever flown. It's been such a joy. I absolutely have loved seeing it go from the stock 1953 configuration to this fire breathing backcountry beast. And now it's rocking an awesome turquoise paint job with the mountain scheme. Uh, everyone has just done so much to help be a part of this awesome project. Flying H, Cessna 170-3224 Alpha is departing runway at 36. here today. 170 handles it with ease. It's been super fun overseeing the restoration of this Cessna 170 over the past year and a half. There's been lots of challenges with it, of course, just like any restoration, but truly this has been such a rewarding process. We've had the privilege of working with so many wonderful industry connections like Continental, Scheme Designers, Alaskan Bushwheels, BAS, and so many others. This airplane would not have been possible without their support. Fine H, Cessna 170 is turning final, runway 36, Fine H. If you can see the 170 fitting into your flying adventures, you'll want to visit aopa.org slash sweep for all the information on how you can enter to win. We'll be giving it away to one very lucky pilot in January. Hey Kayla, wow, what a beautiful 170. I gotta say though, I would be really nervous to take that into the back country with that just immaculate interior. Yeah, you and me both, Alyssa. Honestly, the interior wasn't supposed to look that nice. Honestly, I love it though. Uh, but yes, it is definitely super nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you've put a lot of work and effort into this project. What is the favorite feature, your favorite feature on this backcountry beast? Oh, dang. That is such a hard question. I mean, this airplane has been my baby over the last year and a half. So I love so many different parts of it. But honestly, I mean, the Continental Prime IL-370, 195 horsepower engine, thanks to the Dave Suits STC. I mean, gosh, the airplane is just like the biggest ball of fun you could ever have thanks to that horsepower and that, that propeller. I mean, it's just an incredible combination. Awesome. Well, great job and thank you, Kayla. Thank you so much. The AOPA Air Safety Institute has released a new real pilot story. This one is called The Heat of the Moment. It's actually about a different Cessna 170. It's about a couple that was taking off from Bird's Backcountry Airstrip in Arkansas under high density altitude conditions. The 170 was uh, struggling during the takeoff. The pilot was about to abort when the airplane uh, lifted off and started a shallow climb. However, it wasn't able to clear a tree line. The pilot and his passenger and a pilot who witnessed the accident share the harrowing story and lessons learned in this new real pilot story. You can watch that on the AOPA Air Safety Institute's YouTube channel. Just click on the link in the upper right of your screen. Well, you are gonna wanna see this next video that just posted on our YouTube channel. We take you behind the scenes of the breathless team at the Reno Air Races with pilot Conrad Huffstutler. They fly a normally aspirated Lance Air Legacy. We delve into the airplane's racing history, its aerodynamics, and the planning and airmanship that goes into racing. I think we did great this year and had a lot of fun and now it's just time to put down the fastest speed we can. Four racers, you have a race. 
Vicky in race 15 was back there with me. She was in eighth place. She typically is a little bit faster than me because she runs uh, a lot of nitrous. She did pass me on the uh, uh, first couple laps. Kept flying as fast as I could and as tight as I could to make it back up to her and try to get a pass. Caught back up to her and, and I got a little bit of altitude on her on the backside, the Valley of Speed. When we pushed down, all the aerodynamic qualities of the airplane come into play and it allows me to jump ahead. So I was able to pass her on, on the last lap and get seventh place in the gold. So it doesn't sound too great, but we had a great competition back there and had a lot of fun. Just click on the card in the upper right of your screen to watch that full video. It is absolutely amazing. Finally this week, we take you to the High Sierra Fly-In in the Nevada desert. And we really got a special treat. We got to talk with the famous Red Bull pilot who landed the highly modified Cub Crafters airplane on the helipad on top of Skyscraper in Dubai. He decided to drop into the event to check out Stoll Drag. Hi, I'm uh, Luke Cepiela. I'm from Poland. I'm at the High Sierra Flying with the Little Beast, the aircraft modified by Mike Patey that I used for a bullseye landing in Dubai where we landed this aircraft at Virtual Arab Hotel. So the aircraft is almost in the same configuration as we had it for the bullseye landing. We changed the prop back to a slightly smaller one and the tires are back to stock tires. Uh, we had a special lightweight tires for the bullseye landing. Now we want something durable uh, to do some nice bush flying, you know, in the back country. So the tires are back to normal, but the rest of the aircraft is standard configuration, you know. For a special aircraft, I love to fly it. Major modifications are basically removing the fuel tanks and putting the fuel tanks in back of the fuselage so I would have more braking power available. The nitrous, you know, I went from uh, 180 to 230 horsepower, making the escape maneuver a lot better and the takeoff safer as well. And, uh, you know, the nitrous uh, helps here with this, with this tall drag as well. <laughs> so that's one big advantage. Yeah, basically one of the nicest aircraft I ever had the pleasure to fly. I just did the qualification. I'm not sure about the racing. I haven't had too much time to train. And uh, you know, being a pro athlete, if I if I see that I I cannot win, <laughs> I'm not sure I want to attempt it. And definitely, it's uh, you know, it's really really hard to beat Steve Henry. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see about the race. Uh, I did the quali. I think I was 13 the quali. So for the first time to be here, and uh, you know, today was my first time ever in the stall drag. So to post a. Uh, time number three, that's that's a pretty good result. I, I think, you know, the, the stall drag is a pretty cool concept. It's really good for the people having the plane side, side by side. I used to do Red Bull Air Race and uh, I was I was doing pretty well in the Challenger class. And uh, the stall drag is nice concept. I think there's a lot more to develop to, to, to make it like a really popular big sport. But you can see that year by year, they have more and more regulation, bringing it up to a good sporting standard. I think the, personally, the good addition would be to introduce classes like at the Rina Air Race to have unlimited heavies and uh, class introduction definitely would help uh, to, to make it more fair. But uh, yeah, definitely, I really like it. To know the aircraft well, it's the biggest advantage for the pilot. You know, I have about 400 hours in the carbon caps. That really helped me today to put it in the deep side sleep, to, to break and to know how to play with the energy. You know, the stall drag is all about the energy. You quickly need to build up as much as you can and then dissipate it very quickly. So knowing your aircraft while flying it in different configurations, that really helps you as a, as a pilot. And I think for the plane, Definitely a lot of power and a lot of braking power. Like uh, I could see the guys with the uh, reversible prop, that makes a huge difference. Uh, I think with the nitrous that I have, and if I had a reversible prop, I would be uh, pretty high up in the rankings. Well, I am sure that was quite the treat at High Sierra this year. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Fly with AOPA. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all our latest videos. And this week, we leave you with some more footage from the High Sierra Fly-In. Thanks to our very own video content producer, Jamal Warner. And as always, please send us your favorite flying videos. We'll drop a link for you to do that down in the description below. If you're not already an AOPA pilot, we'd love for you to join us. Just click on the link at the end of this video to learn more about our trial membership. We'll see you next week. <laughs>